So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here and today I'm going to do a little bit of aquarium microscopy behind me, a beautiful uh, aquarium, of course many plants and many fish and uh, actually also many water microorganisms that could be observed under the microscope but I'm going to show you a little trick later on what you can do to make sure that there are enough of them actually to be seen. And I will also talk about the importance of water microorganisms in keeping an aquarium clean because they are actually yeah, as important as fish and as the plants for a healthy aquarium system. What you see me here uh, now is I'm collecting now some water plants, um, um, yeah, fresh water plants. There were not so many of them that were decomposing um, or breaking down. I could have found some of them maybe um, in the sediment or in the bottom um, of the aquarium but I could not reach all the way in and I simply yeah, tore out a few plants. I have to tell you well actually um, I tried to make sure that my hands are reasonably clean because of course I do not want to contaminate uh, yeah, <laughs> the aquarium water with other microbes uh, that might be living on my, uh, on my fingers. So yes a small jar um, of uh, water plants here and no fish. This is really important because the fish of course they keep the microbial count low because they're eating them away. In order to make an enrichment culture, and that is not a little trick, I added a crushed cereal grain or wheat grain, oats, yeah, to the water sample and then I let it stand for approximately one week. Um, this is food for bacteria and the bacteria will then start to grow and after one week uh, you will not only find bacteria in there but also a large um, amount of other water microorganisms, uh, protists for example. I'm going to show them to you um, in just a second. Cover glass goes on top. I like the large cover glasses uh, because they kind of keep all the evaporation low a little bit. Yeah and uh, what are you able to see there? Okay so so let's um, have a look. Um, this is what I found. The first thing that I saw is a lot of cells uh, floating around and I'm going to um, also quickly uh, uh, click the pause button to show you something over here. Um, what you have is, is of course uh, yeah, a little bit blurry right now when I were paused the video because they're out of focus. Uh, these are of course protozoa and those little dots that you see uh, floating around in the background these are bacteria and those protozoa of course uh, they are going to eat up the bacteria and because I added the little food uh, particle call this little wheat grain. Um, this um, actually supplies enough food uh, for bacteria and the protozoa to, um, in, uh, to grow and to multiply. Yeah and uh, they were basically floating around and hunting down the bacteria, taking them in, sucking them in and digesting them. Um, and uh, those uh, water microorganisms they of course also play very important roles therefore not only for keeping the bacterial count low um, but they're also responsible for removing poisons that accumulate in the aquarium. In just a minute I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. Um, what we have over here is, is this here is also a single celled protist, a very common one. Many of you already know it. It's a called paramecium and if you look very carefully um, um, here it's a little difficult to see but when the video is starting again um, there are tiny little hair on the surface. These are called cilia and those cilia they beat and they move the cell forward and uh, they are also important uh, for collecting food and for moving the food uh, into the cell because uh, there is actually um, somewhere over here difficult to see there's the so-called the mouth and this is where the water is sucked in um, and um, any particles that are in there yeah, parts of cells and, and also bacteria are going to end up inside uh, the paramecium and are, are then di digested there. Yeah here now you can see the little cilia beating again and it's moving around in a very agitated way. Sometimes a little bit difficult to, to chase down because it immediately moves out of the field of, of view again. Yeah and these here are, these are now bacteria and I really went up with the magnification. These are so called spirilla and they're spiral shaped. Um, yeah when I've seen uh, when I've seen those I said oh I've got to be careful because some of them are not um, yeah are not quite healthy um, so just make sure that you don't get any um, of them on your fingers and wash your hands if you do because you don't really know what they're doing and uh, I'm, I do not automatically expect them to be dangerous because they are water organisms but at the concentration like this you, you should be a little bit careful and they of course are also eaten up by the protozoa that you find here. Yeah here again uh, they're making an interesting I don't know why they actually made a ring shaped orientation here but uh, yeah apparently um, there are 
going around in a circle because maybe there is uh, it has to do something with the level of oxygen concentration and over the minutes I was actually able to see that the diameter of the circle became larger as they were moving away towards a higher oxygen concentration. Again uh, two paramecia over here yeah and uh, if you uh, look very carefully and this is not a very um, yeah very good uh, uh, yeah place to stop but at least here in the lower one you can see that there are sometimes those little circles in there those larger circles some of them are so-called food vacuoles where they are actually digesting food that they've taken in and sometimes those circles are also the, uh, the so-called the, the nucleus where the DNA is stored um, I think this one is pretty large actually and sometimes you can also see uh, so-called contractile vacuoles which are important uh, for pumping out the water uh, from the cell so there are actually uh, simply by looking into the cell quite a few interesting things that you're able to observe now a little bit a few words about uh, the how those microorganisms are important for cleaning the water you have to know that fish are, are producing not producing nitrogen wastes uh, called um, ammonia and this ammonia is, is quite toxic and uh, bacteria are now removing the ammonia by converting it to nitrites and to nitrates and the nitrates are then used by the plants again um, and uh, those nitrates are far less toxic um, than for example ammonia and uh, for this reason a, a healthy aquarium needs to have its uh, fair share of microorganisms and bacteria and if it does not have a, a sufficient of those then of course uh, this means that uh, it's a problem maybe for the fish and for this reason you have to usually wait several days maybe a week or two weeks um, you yeah, have to set up the aquarium and then only after this time you're supposed to um, put the fish into the aquarium because this gives the aquarium enough time to actually um, yeah, re regenerate enough of these microorganisms. Yeah, again, I paused the video here because I wanted to show you again. There's also a single celled uh, um, organism, possibly a Euplotis um, is the name. And uh, you see there are these green spots in here. And those green spots, these are most likely algae uh, that it has eaten. So it's not a photosynthetic organism. And uh, I mean, there are some protozoa out there where they have, uh, that are eating the algae um, as a so called endosymbionts. Those algae are than living inside the cell but over here I think um, it looks rather like a food that it has eaten um, and is now being digested okay so you see it, uh, it's quite interesting what you're able to see in <laughs> in a small drop, uh, drop of water and the cilia of course also beating and it's actually quite interesting over here um, this green one unfortunately a little bit out of I mean I don't know could this be could this be a protozoan let me have a look yeah unfortunately blurry if it's green like that it could be that this uh, it could be a protist which actually has a uh, green endosymbiotic algae I'm not so sure about this it's uh, kind of blurry but uh, it's quite uh, quite well possible okay so let's move on a little bit over here yeah yeah, it actually looks uh, almost like it and this one is one of my favorites here this is a, a, in time lapse an amoeba and this amoeba as well if you look carefully in it it has some green uh, parts inside the cell and uh, these are also some algae and some um, diatoms that it has eaten let me go reverse a little bit because what we see here this gigantic little thing this gigantic little <laughs> organism over here is actually um, a rotifer it's a multicellular animal yeah, it's actually a so-called a micro animal it's made of many cells and the proto uh, and the, the the amoeba over here is actually one cell so you just uh, see simply by comparing the size that this uh, rotifer which maybe contains a thousand cells it's what I read <laughs> once actually the individual cells must, must be significantly smaller obviously than this gigantic um, amoeba that you see um, um, over there yeah let's move on again a little bit okay yeah and uh, of course in time lapse and you see how the amoeba is uh, changing its shape and moving around and uh, this way also engulfing and hunting down for food so what it does actually it is uh, it has those uh, pseudo uh, pseudopods these are the extensions right and it tries to flow around the food that it wants to eat and capture it this way so in this case over here yeah it tries to capture whatever this is over here it's trying to flow around it and then the membrane closes again on the other side and then it has engulfed it but I think over here it didn't quite manage uh, to do that okay here again here it tries it again it's trying to flow around this uh, uh, yeah, central cell apparently yeah, what it is but it uh, turns out to be a little bit too big so it just gives up and, and moves on and then you can see quite nicely in here yeah, diatom shells 
um, other, other algae, maybe a whole bunch of bacteria as well. And those large circles that you see here are quite well possible that that's the nucleus of, of the amoeba which contains uh, the DNA. Again, a rotifer over here. Yeah? And so they, basically these are all the little, um, yeah, little uh, microorganisms and microanimals that are important uh, in an aquarium to make sure that the, the aquarium is healthy and balanced. And uh, because as we've seen before, um, some of uh, the plants, even though they have those microorganisms on them, um, yeah, it's not enough. Right? And for this is the reason why there is an aquarium filter and it's also the important why there must be enough gravel um, in, on the bottom of uh, the aquarium so that um, there is a plenty of enough surface area uh, for those microorganisms to grow and to do their activity. Yeah? To break down um, waste materials, um, to produce carbon dioxide for the plants and of course it also serves uh, as a food source uh, for the fish. And I think uh, with that, I'm going to leave it again. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I've uh, made a, also another video where I talk about microbial intelligence. And uh, this is also where you're able to see some of these uh, uh, same clips uh, over here that I made. And uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting as always. And see you around next time. Bye-bye.